All right, we have some questions here to see if you've uh, figured out what how this works. So let's see if we had uh, the primary has 150 turns and the secondary has 300 turns. Um, we have an input of 120 volts. I've got a uh, output has a 100 ohm load. What is input and output? What is my input and output? What? Well, because it's got to be a circuit. So it's going to look like this. One hundred and fifty turns. We'll put this here. We'll go. How many laminations do you need? That'd be two hundred turns. Three hundred. Three hundred turns, and this is ten ohms. Um, I thought it was hundred. Hundred. See if you're paying attention. Finally, you are. No input amperage? Well, basically, the question was. we could do something like this. Like, I don't know how to do this. Yes. And there's the formula right there, so. <laughs> Turns in the primary is how much? 150. And turns in the secondary is? 300. Equals voltage of the primary, which is? 120 volts. Which, now we can find X. What's my voltage of the secondary? 240 volts. So X equals 240 volts. All right, so we can put 240 volts right there. And then we could do the same thing. We just carry it over 120 over 240, 240 equals, and that was secondary, I'm sorry, primary, primary, secondary equals secondary over primary, the current. current now we could figure out the current here. What's current 2. here? 2.4 amps. So 2.4 amps in the secondary, 2.4 amps. So how many amps would be in the primary? 1.2, so we could do 1.2 amps, and we could figure out our resistance, which I didn't ask you. So primary is 120, secondary 240, primary four, wait. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up. Back up, we had, where did we go wrong? 120 in the primary, 240 in the secondary, 2.4 in the secondary. Like 4.8. Yeah, who told me 1.2? Yeah, play the camera back. I know, it's gotta do the maths. So it's 120x equals 2.4 times 240, All right? Yes. So let's see, 2.4 times 240 equals 576, 120x, divide both sides by 120, cancels out. Uh, but one two oh equals four point eight. So this is four point eight. That makes more sense. Four point eight amps. Uh, let's do our power.
How many watts? 570. 576 watts. So how many? How much power over here? What'd you get? 576. 576, because it should be. It cannot create power. And for the resistance on the primary? Resistance on the primary. Is that just, just like the inductive reactance? Yeah, I reactance guess we call it inductive. It's not really. Of the coil? Yeah. But we could ohms. figure. So yeah, it'd be like inductive reactants or not inductive reactants. Well, it kind of would be. Yeah, um, I, I would call it impedance. Impudence? Impudence. Impudence. All right, is everybody cool with diodes? Yeah. Oh shoot, I meant to talk about diodes. Is everybody cool with transformers? Yeah. All right. Yeah, diodes are pretty straightforward. And as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. Okay, well, look, one last time. Does anybody have any questions? No. All right. Just want to make sure. Diodes. Diodes. All right, so we've talked a little bit about diodes so far. You've worked with diodes, and you know that diodes kind of will work like a check valve, allow current to flow one way, but not to flow the other way. Um, so we're gonna look at how they work. I have some funny videos. Um, at least it'll make me laugh, so. Uh, we'll talk about some terms. Terms and conditions. Um, one thing would be a rectifier. That's what I say usually, but I'll try not to this time, but thank you for saying it. It's not a rectum fire, that's a different thing. So what is a rectifier? Well, you should know, because we've already looked at it. What, what has a rectifier in it? Alternator. Alternators have one. So a device, device that allows current to flow in one direction one direction, but stops the flow in the other. That stops, sort of. You should stop that flow of one direction from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your problem? <laughs> Dude, I was in a boy band. <laughs> no. I didn't shoot that. That's my cabin, I don't get It is an electrical check valve. Check valve. They are solid state. What does solid state mean? No it is different than a liquid state. A device which solid material is used to control electronic currents. So a device in which in which solid material is used to control electric currents is used to control currents. All right, this is a new thing here. I have not shared this part. I added some notes here. I'm going to throw this out here. Semiconductor theory 
In the past, I have not worried about this because I see that books don't agree. Anode versus cathode. I'm going to try that one more time. Anode V cathode. All right, the anode is the electrode where electricity moves into. Is the electrode that um, or where where electricity moves into and you're gonna love this next one let me see usually the positive side What's wrong with that statement? Um, it doesn't follow the electron flow theory. <laughs> yep. Um, let's see. The anode. Ooh. The anode. Oops. The anode attracts. Attracts negative charge. That follows through, right? Those two statements work together. The positive. <laughs> See, but he's thinking. I like that. Um, acts as an electron acceptor. I just found a book that I really liked, and I took it right out of that. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to throw this in there. So the anode is usually the positive side? Yeah. Oh, so you're brainwashing. Yes. See, one, the anode, and then this sub stuff. So the anode. So I'm guessing electron flow theory is where books kind of get like conflicting. It must be. In years past, I've really shied away from this subject of anode cathode. One, because I just. You know, I don't work it, but then I thought, yeah, let's kind of throw it in there and just see how this works out. So the cathode. Were your test subjects? Yes. Oops. I don't believe in this that much. <laughs> well, actually, I figured nobody's listening anyway, so if it oh, goes yeah. terribly wrong, then I'll fix it next year when I can yeah. see, you know. What? Wait, we were writing that The cathode <laughs> is the electrode. Where electricity I've been here for an entire semester and you still haven't told me how to fly an airplane. I don't get this class. Or how to guide them either. What's a class A or space? What's class B? We're raising in and how to make pasta sauce. What? Where electricity is given out or flows out of. All right, and electro electricity moves into, so that's electron flow theory. Cathode is electrode where electricity is given out or flows out of. Um, usually the negative side. I don't know why I would say usually. I don't know what the exception is. Um, is that like a polarity? I just told you I don't know. Don't ask me. Unless you're offering a suggestion. Like battery flipping over polarity? Yes. And that is one of the things where anode and cathode, I've noticed, you really get into these trying to figure it out. Don't do it with the battery because it does. Uh, cathode attracts. Oh, I like this. I'm like, what? Um, I had to look this one up. C A T I O N S. A positively charged ion. Yeah. 
Some more extend life time rings and yeah, bro. Or positive charge. It is the source of electrons. Is the source. Source of electrons. And my favorite part. If you forget, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Positive anode. <laughs> Positive anode PA, so N must be negative. Negative is cathode. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Don't panic. P and I C. Positive anode. Negative is cathode. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I did not come up with that. Uh, there's so many of those acronym words in aviation. It's like impossible. <laughs> okay. So before we move off from this, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how. The, the atomic structure is of these items we're going to look at, silicon and germanium. Um, so what we end up, well, I can just let you watch the, the video because it's actually pretty good, but you should know that really a diode, and we're going to look at, I think, transistors first in the video, but a diode is just a simplified version of that. Um, you have an N and a P section. So you take these, huh? Well, no, I want to hear So what you do is you take um, your semiconductor material, silicon or germanium. <laughs> silicon or germanium. And the atomic structure is, if you remember going back to electricity, that that is really distracting. <laughs> On his phone. What are you doing anyway? Voice oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> it's even worse. All right. So. He <laughs> doesn't fall asleep to white noise. He just falls asleep to Utah. <laughs> My wife does too. So. Uh, <laughs> all right. Where was I? So anyway, so uh, we talked about the atomic structure of stuff. We said, okay, if it has more than half its valence, valence electrons, then it is a... You're like, I didn't think you'd ever ask me that again. <laughs> well, let's go the other way. If it has less than half, then it has free electrons. It wants to give up easily. It becomes a conductor. a conductor. So if it has more than half, then it's insulator. insulator. All right, and I'll write this down a little bit. But we're going to look at silicon and germanium, which is funny because silicon has 14 atoms, or electrons, 14 electrons, um, which is 2, 8, and 4. Four. And if you remember that 2n squared, to figure out how many you can have in there, n is the what shell it is. Um, so that's 2, the first shell. So how many? Could, what's the most you could have? 1. n is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So it would be 2 times 2 squared, which means you can have 8. And this is the third shell, so 2 three squared, you can have as much as three squared is three times three, which is nine times two is 18. 18. So if it's two, eight, and four, we have four electrons in the valence ring. It should be a conductor, conductor but it's not. And uh, germanium um, has 32, which goes two, eight, 18, and four. So it's even worse. But yet it's got a structure such that when they're together, there are no free electrons. They lock in place uh, out there. So 
you have no free electrons whatsoever, so they kind of stick, right? And so you get this, this lattice work of atoms that are all sort of locked in, and the electrons, there are no free electrons, so they don't move. So um, you're going to see how, in a little video, what they do is they dope it so that it does work. I'll just show you that because it's kind of cool. So hit the lights. Why do they say it has no moving parts? Which one? Yeah. Oh, you counted all of them? Yeah. Yeah. I bet you did. You counted. Did you see the gorilla bounce the ball? All right. So back to our diode theory. Recording. Yes. And what what was just discussed? Hopefully, it made sense to you. So in a diode, we have, diode only has the two sections. You have the n-type and the p-type. So the n-type, the n-type needs what to turn on? Uh, the, needs the, the positive. Needs, needs negative. And the p-type needs positive. needs positive to turn on. So if we look down here in the, the first, the top drawing right here, I'll enlarge it for you, which is just that. So what happens is it is on. We have the negative side of the battery connected to the negative. N type. So opposites. Opposites attract likes and repel. likes repel. So we have a negative going up to the n-type doped, which means n-type. It had holes or electrons? Electrons. Had extra electrons. So the negative side here repels those extra electrons to jump across the barrier as where the positive side is attracting the electrons. And so we're pushing the electrons across the barrier. They're filling the holes. It, it has the arrow this way because the holes are going to move from the left to the right. But the electrons are, are really moving, and they're going to fill the holes up. Think about it from jumping from hole to hole to hole. And the negative is attracted here by the positive and back around, so it is on. So the, the takeaway is when you put a positive on a P and a negative on an N, it's going to be in the on forward biased on stage. Yes? It mentioned it was like a difference of 0.67 volts. Is that a constant thing or is that just... I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, then looking at this one, it's off. Well, even if we didn't have the... Well, they have a battery, so it just made everything worse. So over here, the battery, opposites attract. So we have a positive here. So it took all of the electrons and just pulled them over to this side over here. And this side, the, we have the negative, and so in theory it grabbed all the holes and pulled it this way, so you have a much larger depletion zone right there, right? So you have no free electrons at all in here, so it's super off. But if we disconnect the battery, it looks like this to a certain state. And what happened is you have electrons over on this side right here, and you have holes on this side, and it just so happens that because they're close, they're in the same neighborhood, all the electrons are like, there's a hole. And they kind of cross over, what's that hole? And they fill the little holes. But not everybody, you know, they're from a different neighborhood, they don't want to cross, you know, they're too far away. So only a few of those electrons kind of cross that barrier, cross a little border, and go over there. And so that leaves a depletion zone right there. Um, so in regards to that, if the voltage That is correct. If you don't have a battery big enough, it's like no battery. So you got to go across that. All right. What else we got here? Ah, that's the rectifier. We've already talked about that. Let's see. We'll go back to this. Come over to here. Let's see. Cathode. Let me see. Um, 
B, well, we watched the video because that's what my notes say. Nobody reminded me. If I don't write video, then be like, why am I off on my notes everywhere? Uh, let's see, we had silicon and germanium, our principal semiconductor materials. Germanium, our principal semiconductor materials. And I have to make my same old joke that germanium, I think, is Michael Jackson's brother, but that's just, you're too young for that. Michael Jackson, he was a singer. He died a while ago. He had a brother named Germaine. Germaine. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I don't think we need to get into this. Semiconductors have four electrons in the valence shell. And I already wrote that. Silicon has 14 electrons. Germaine has 32. Two atoms form bonds easily and do not easily move from one atom to another. Doping adds impurities to semiconductor material. And we went through the whole slide, and I don't need to go through all of that. Do we need to care about what they're doped with? No. Okay. But what was it? Boron, Boron and phosphorus. phosphorus. Phosphorus, see? I heard that there's, I used arsenic in, in one year. I have heard that, yeah. Oh, boy, that's good. That would explain my wife's always trying to get me to eat diodes. <laughs> <laughs> you should eat more diodes. Um, that the spot where the two elements come together is called the what? Depletion zone. Well, it's actually called a junction. Okay. All right. Yeah, if you say so. Yeah, we didn't tell you that, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, electrons flow in the n-type, and what flows in the other one? Holes. Right. Kind of. All right, let's move on to the diode. We'll talk specifically about the diode. So, in a diode. And a diode. Diode, like an electric check valve. I think I already wrote that, but I'll write it again. Let's see, like. There are different types. Interesting thing about them is, um, oh, so we can draw a little a diode over here. So what is a diode for a symbol for a diode? Two lines. Two lines. Line. Triangle. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Yeah. Diode. My bad. Which side is the positive? This side, which side is yeah, this right here? Positive. This positive. And that makes it the anode. Anode. And this is the anode. native side. So that'd be the cathode. Before we got married, my wife was a cathode. She's Protestant now, so she, she switched over. I think that's how that works. So this little arrow right here points in the direction of electron flow. Uh, not electron yeah, flow. Not <laughs> conventional. Conventional flow. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff, if you think about it in conventional flow, it starts to make more sense. So the arrow is pointing towards conventional flow. Or this right here is the negative symbol if you want to think about that and so that's the negative side with the big negative and that's that right there so um, sometimes you can get let me see um, if they're I don't think I have a picture of one but if you actually had one this way the little stripe indicates the negative negative side uh, all right negative side, yeah um, Then, like an electrical check, VAL. Check electrical check valve. Um, let's see. In a diode, current will only flow in direction. So, current will only flow in direction. See, when forward biased, it 
It is on or off? Uh, on. on. And reverse bias is? Uh, let's see. So we do this. This one is wrongly drawn. <laughs> yep, very special battery. Should just made it. All right, this one is. So that's reverse. Which is off. off. Then this one is the opposite. Forward bias. And it is in the ON position. All right, you should know this one. Let's see. Diodes have very low resistance. In one direction. And measure open. in the other direction. How many of you have problems with that? With your Simpson meter, you would measure it one way and like, okay, that's low resistance. Well, now it doesn't work. So you turn it up to a different thing. You're like, well, now it works in both directions and there's something weird. And I get this resistance on that. And it's all messed up. Try right? again. Wrote that down. Oh, try again. <laughs> What's that? Sounds like you wrote that in the instructions to do it. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many people don't read that. <laughs> I watched the guy next to me, and that's not what he did. Um, however, what is the resistance? An indicated resistance with ohmmeter. is dependent yep dependent on input voltage of the meter so when you check one my my uh, DMM has a uh, diode check does have a diode checker yeah and, and I mean I don't really I, I looked up how to use it and they were like, just put it on the diode and it just tells you it's good. And it's like, well, I don't really tell That's you. right. So a digital <laughs> VOM, volt ohm meter. Did it just <laughs> all right that. read only memory? Like, is the check just like a, like a all or nothing thing? It's like good or bad? Uh, no, actually. So digital VOM will measure voltage drops. And that makes it good or bad. We'll measure voltage drops. So silicon. Um, we'll show about 0.6 freaking hate you 0 0.6 volts in forward bi bias and 0 volts in reverse Germanium uh, 
stream will show show about zero point three instead of six volts. I'm trying to remember your didn't yours they had about a two point five voltage drop, right? Mine. Uh, when you go back to one of the first projects we did, what was the voltage drop of most of the diodes? Was that a two point something? Yeah, we keep in mind that's because we applied more voltage. Are you talking about on the on the, the Wendy gear circuit thing, or are you talking about on the, on the first diode thing? Like first diode thing. Six volts or point six volts? Point six. Uh, and of instead of if. Instead of point six, so time to go. Time to go. All right.